This is from Harlan's notes. It's called Words Never Spoken Before. These words from the living God had never been spoken before. See that you refuse not him that speaks from God, for if they escape not who refused him that spoke on earth, much more shall you not escape if you turn away from him that speaks from heaven. I believe Harlan was going to speak on each subject because he had not written it down in detail. This is very difficult without Harlan, and it's a heartache and a burden, but it is the absolute truth without a doubt. And so I will tell it as long as Yeshua requires, and then I'm out of here. Harlan had briefly gone over his notes with me, showing me what he was working on before Jesus took him home. I pray that I tell what he had in mind. Jesus told me that I would be with him soon in his kingdom. So I take comfort in that as part of my faith. Here's a list of the words never spoken before. Then I will break them down for explanation one by one. He'd written this in his notes. The Bible is an idol. The Bible is the mark of the beast. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Two words of God. Two witnesses. Scriptures can't forgive you. The foundation teachings. So starting with the Bible is an idol. I was searching for God in truth when Jesus spoke to me. The Bible is an idol. I'd never heard this before, and it changed my life from searching in the Bible to searching only with my heart and the spirit. And Jesus has taught me many wonderful things and has blessed me all my life. You can actually know him and not just know about him, and he will walk with you and talk with you. And you don't need a Bible or a church. You just need the gift and promise of God, which is the Holy Spirit. The Bible is the mark of the beast. And then Jesus told me the Bible is the mark of the beast. The reason for this is because Satan used a wicked ruler, Constantine, who was a beast king, to compile it into an idol and cause everyone that would serve Jesus to come under its authority through his satanic Roman church and doctrine, keeping them under the control of the law in the flesh in which no one could be saved. It breaks the new covenant of Christ, writing his laws in your heart by the Holy Spirit. Then another wicked beast king, James VI of Scotland, first of England, had his English version of the Bible made, which now has 66 books you carry in your hand and memorize in your head, an image of God's word made to speak. The Bible says, to bring those that would not conform to the Roman church's control under the control of the Bible, once again, taking people away from seeking for God with their heart and the spirit to searching the scriptures, which cannot save you. Jesus said, search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. And those are they that testify of me, but you will not come to me that you might have life. The gift and promise of God to us is the Holy Spirit, not the Bible. The Bible is only history, and your faith cannot be in the dead letter, but only in the living Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Then Jesus told me that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John were under the old covenant. Jesus came to his own, Abraham's seed. He was teaching them to obey the law, and he told them not to go into the way of the Gentiles. It was only for the Jews. Jesus was fulfilling the law, although he did speak of some of the new covenant that would come after he gave his life as a sacrifice. He would say that if he did not go away, that the comforter would not come. So when the devil had the Bible compiled, he compiled it into a lie when he put Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John as New Testament. A testament is not a force until after the death of the testator. The new covenant started after Jesus died on the cross and then the Holy Spirit was poured out on the day of Pentecost. The new covenant is Christ in us, not words in a book about him. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them. And it shall come to pass in the last days, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. 
And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. Two words of God. The written word of God from the old covenant was the word of God when it was in effect. But then when Jesus, who was the seed to come, made the sacrifice, he became the living word of God and he speaks to us by the Holy Spirit. Wherefore, then serve the law. It was added because of transgressions till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. And it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are a law unto themselves. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. So there were two words of God. There was the old covenant, the written word of God, written on tablets of stone and, and with ink. And that was until the seed would come. Jesus Christ is that seed. He's the new seed, the holy seed that replaced Adam's corrupted seed. Lucifer put his seed in Adam's heart and he polluted all of mankind with his corrupt seed to get us to live after the lusts of the flesh and to sin. Well, God needed a new seed. And so he sent Jesus Christ, who was born of a virgin by the Holy Spirit, and he was a holy seed. And now he puts his seed in our hearts and we sin not. We do by nature the things of the will of God because God is in us. It's not laws written with ink or on tablets of stone. That was done away in Christ. Christ fulfilled that. So now Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, is the living word of God. This is the real everlasting word of God. So you have the old word of God written, and now you have the spiritual word of God through Jesus Christ by the Holy Spirit. Two words of God, two witnesses. I'm not sure exactly what Harlan was going to say about the two witnesses, except perhaps that they must come to tell that people have broken the covenant of God, which we know the Holy Spirit is the everlasting covenant, not the written word. The Bible will pass away. It will burn with the earth, but the spirit and the words spoken by the living Christ will never pass away. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. They must be preaching that the Bible, these two witnesses must be preaching that the Bible is an idol and it is the mark of the beast because they are hated so much that after the days of their testimony, they are killed and the people rejoice sending gifts one to another like it was Christmas time. People in general do not want to do the will of God because they love the flesh and so they resist the Holy Spirit and reject the truth and it will bring the end of the world. Whether we know exactly what the two witnesses say or when they come or came, we do know that they represent God testifying that the people are breaking the will of God and that is why God sent them. Scriptures cannot forgive you. People think that by quoting and claiming scriptures that their sins are forgiven, which is not true. Only the real resurrected living Jesus Christ can forgive your sins and fill you with the Holy Spirit. You can quote scriptures until your face turns blue and your sins will not be forgiven. And scriptures cannot save you or make you a Christian. Scriptures cannot heal you. Scriptures are dead letter history that were once anointed and alive when they were spoken by the living Jesus Christ and those that the Holy Spirit anointed to speak. But you claiming and quoting scriptures is a deception that will lead you to hell. You must actually repent from living after the flesh. Stop idolizing the Bible and going to the harlot churches. Ask Jesus to fill you with the Holy Spirit and then be led only of Christ by the Holy Spirit. The gospel is pure and simple. Be filled with the Holy Spirit and live after the Spirit. The foundation teachings. These are the foundation teachings that God wrote in my heart by his Spirit with light from heaven. The foundation is also mentioned in Hebrews 6, 1 through 3, although Harlan didn't realize it until after the Lord wrote him in his heart with light from heaven. There, there is some truth in the Bible, but you can't get it from the Bible. That's why there's 45,000 different denominations. You can only get it from the living Jesus Christ through the Spirit, not for, from searching the Scriptures. You cannot get the truth from the Scriptures. The Spirit is truth. 
not the Bible. Okay, the foundation teachings. There are eight stones in the foundation. Stone number one, Jesus is the Christ, the chief cornerstone, the anointed one by God to be the Savior and King. Stone number two, repent, change to God's ways, change from living after the flesh to living after the spirit. Stone number three, faith toward God. Faith is trusting in the spirit of the invisible God and what he tells you by the Holy Spirit not by believing in the Bible. Stone number four, baptism in water. It's your funeral day. You give up your life after the flesh as Jesus gave up his. That is why we are baptized in Jesus' name. He is the one that died for us. The Father and the Holy Spirit did not die. Stone number five, baptism in the Spirit of God. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit is when you are born again. Without the Spirit, you're not of Christ. You're not a child of God. You're not a Christian without the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is what regenerates you into a son or daughter of God and which changes your nature. You become a new creature. So you need the real baptism of the real Holy Spirit and not just claim it from the scriptures. Stone number six, God lives in and uses your body. They call it the laying on of hands. Your body becomes the temple of God. Your life is no longer your own. God uses your body, your hands, your mouth, etc., to minister, to live through, to work through, to minister to others. Stone number seven, the resurrection of the dead. Without the resurrection, there is no hope. Under the old covenant, the old saints, they slept in their graves. They were waiting for the seed to come. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. And without him, we have no hope. So our souls will be resurrected from the dead. That's what happens when we leave our body. If you have the Holy Spirit, your soul will leave your body and you will go to be with Jesus and he will place you in his kingdom. So stone number seven is the resurrection of the dead. Without the resurrection, there is no hope. Stone number eight, the final stone is eternal judgment. We can repent now while we are still in the body but eternal judgment will be forever. So be careful how you live while in the body. Thinking you can keep the 10 commandments, which you can't, will not save you. You better get to know the real living Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit. Jesus told those people, they said, Lord, we did many mighty works in your name. We cast out demons and we healed the sick. We preached the gospel in your name. Well, they were preaching the Bible. They weren't ministering the spirit. They weren't ministering the true gospel. And Jesus told them, well, tell them, I never knew you because they didn't come to him. They just searched the scriptures. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. So eternal judgment will be forever. Make sure that you really are in the will of the living Jesus Christ and not just deceived from religion and Bible doctrine. You can repent now while you're still in the body, but eternal judgment will be forever. So be careful how you live in the body. The words never spoken before. The Bible is an idol. The Bible is the mark of the beast. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John were under the old covenant, the two words of God, the old covenant, and Jesus Christ, the living word of God. The two witnesses were preaching. People were breaking the covenant of God, probably telling that the Bible is an idol, most likely. And the scriptures can't forgive you and the foundation teachings. These are words never spoken of before. These are from Harlan's notes. While kneeling in my life of disappointment, lying within my heart I could not see. Pieces of my life were scattered about me. Then Jesus' hands and love reached down for me. And I love him because he understands me. Oh, I love him because he set me free. I love him because of Mount Calvary. And I love him most because he first loved me. Now I have the strength to serve the Savior. His spirit came and set this captive free. Storms of life can never wound the feeling. By faith in God, His voice is guiding me. And I love Him because He understands me. Oh, I love Him because He set me free. Oh, I love Him because of my Calvary. But I love him most because
because he first loved me. Yes, I love him most because he first 